So guys, the top 10 tank sets. This is my opinion, right? If you don't agree, that is fine. If you've got a different tier list of what you think is the best set, that is fine as well. There's going to be some kind of alternative opinions, but this is my opinion based on my experience. And I'm going to start off by saying that these gear sets are going to be the top 10 tank sets for group content. And this is in terms of buffing your group, helping your group, how good they are for, for buffing groups, for providing buffs benefits to group content in this list there are no selfish gear sets because i have the opinion that i don't believe in selfish gear sets i don't believe in leeching is something that you have to use um you can just press a healing skill you can just put down an aoe heal you don't need it it's something that you can have you can use it if you need it but it's not something that everybody needs. It's something that most people don't need. It's something that you can use if you'd like to because you're struggling with a certain situation. And it's the same for other gear sets. Like, if there's a set that provides sustain, I, I think that things like um, Sedusa is a great beginner set. It's craftable. It provides you with great sustain because all of your skills on a tank are magic are pretty much. So it's a great sustain set. But it's not going to feature in a top 10 list because it's only a set that is good at that early stage as a beginner. So these are sets that are going to be things that are very, very vital, valuable, important. Things that you need later on in the game. If you want to be doing trials or dungeons or arenas with an organized group to a good level, that is the gear sets that we're looking at here. We're not looking at those selfish gear sets. This is only gear sets that are going to be good in organized groups that are trying to like progress and do well in the content. Um, we're not doing monster sets. That'll be a separate list altogether. So we'll do monster sets a different time. This is just main gear sets. We're going to start off with number 10. So number 10 on the list is going to be... It's going to be Gallonway. So... This set's number 10 because it does have a little bit of use, a little bit of value. It's not completely useless. Now... The reason why this is not an absolutely essential set is because if you've got a Necro who is a support, so a healer or a tank, and they're on a Necro, they can use the skill Empowering Grasp, which does the exact same thing. It does the same thing as this set. So if you've got that, then you don't need this gear set. However, this provides the buff in power to your group, and it's really, really easy to proc as well. So Empowering Grasp is actually really difficult to manage because you've got to get it on multiple targets. Each circle from Empowering Grasp only hits six people as a maximum, so you need to cast it and people need to be in different locations to be able to get it. Using Gallonweight is 100%. It goes on everybody who's in range. So you block an attack and it procs on everyone. Now, the amount of DPS you gain from this, it's a good few percent. If you don't have a source of Empower in your group, then if you've got a really good uptime of this, you're going to provide quite a good increase of DPS. So in groups that don't have a Necro Tank or Healer, this is a good set because in power is quite a strong buff. It buffs light and heavy attacks, the damage by 40%. And that is quite a big buff because everybody should be light attacking in between their skills. You should be heavy attacking for sustain. And so this is really, really nice. Everybody in like group content will be doing that at some kind of way, in some format, for some reason. And light attacks are one of the highest DPS um, things that you can do on a damage dealer. So by be buffing that thing by 40% is obviously huge. So when I've tested this myself, we've done it in di numerous different raids. Um, and it performed really well. It definitely increased DPS by a good amount. But like I say, the fact is you can replace this. So if you have got that Necro support, it's not as useful. So that is number 10. And like I say, the reason for it being number 10, quite obvious, because it can be replaced. But if you don't have, if you can't replace it because you don't have the ability to replace it, then use it because it's a very good set. Okay, the next gear set. This next gear set isn't, like, it's not essential. Okay, it's more of a set that you will use for something like ad pulls. It's not something you're going to use very often. So... We've got Dragon's Defilement. So what this set does is it provides AoE, 
minor breach. It does it in an area. It's all around your character. And all the enemies stood inside it will get minor breach applied to them. Now, the reason why this is good is because in an ad pull, when you go into an ad pull, if you're able to physically pierce armor everything, you're a better tank, you're a better tank than I am. Because when I start an ad pull, I run in and I range taunt the enemies and I bring them into position and then I block my Defile Dragon procs. Then I'll refresh my taunt if it's starting to run out. The problem is, you don't have time to run over to every single enemy. If you've got an ad pull with eight enemies in it, you're not going to have time to run over and pierce armor every single one. That is a fact. So, by using Dragon's Defilement in an ad pulls, it means that you're able to fully debuff everything. When you combine it with other gear sets, you run in, you range taunt, you maybe throw down Caltrops for the major breach, this procs minor breach, and then you've got like all of your enemies maxed out on pen. Now, the reason why that's important, the more pen value that you've got, the more damage your group will do. So the, 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 like, the first thing you should always try and do to try and increase group damage is to increase your pen so that you're max pen. And max pen is 18,200. Now, that's why this is really good because you can't physically pierce armor everything in an ad pull unless the ad pulls take forever. Like if, you, if you're in a group and the ad pulls take 45 to 60 seconds maybe, then yeah, you are going to be able to pierce armor every ad. If you're in a group that's got a little bit better DPS, maybe an ad pull lasts 15, 20, 30 seconds, then you're not going to have time to pierce armor every ad because some of them are going to die. You're going to be range taunting. That's the main thing. In ad pulls, if you're not range taunting into an ad pull, then how are you getting control of the ads quick enough? I don't know how you would. So Dragon's Defarming, it's, it's an ad pull setup. It's very good for being an ad pull setup, but in terms of everything else, it's not very useful outside of ad pulls. So you would never, ever use Dragon's Defarming on a boss. You would never do that because you can pierce armor a boss easily. It's one enemy, it's stood in front of you, you pierce armor it. Um, there might be certain boss fights where your group's really struggling and you might combine this with another set maybe to provide that where there's loads of ads. But that is a very infrequent situation that doesn't really happen. So in terms of boss fights, it's just better not to use it. There's so many other better sets for boss fights. Uh, but in terms of ad pulls, this is one of the best sets for doing ad pulls. So that is Dragon's... Defilement. Let's add it to the list. Not so good for console players. No, so Dragon's Defilement isn't very useful for console players because you don't have the ability to quickly switch gear from ad pull to boss, from ad pull to boss. So, yeah, it's not very good for console players. I wouldn't say this is not an essential set for console player, but if you want to optimize a raid and you want to be able to damage ad pulls really, really well and, and help your group to kill them fast, you want to be using this. If... That isn't you. If you're on console, it's it's less essential to switch gear just because it takes too long. Um, and you have to manually switch it all. But on, on PC, obviously, you've got add-ons. You've got dressing room that can you press a button and you can switch to an Apple self. So, yeah, in that situation, obviously, not as essential because of that reason. So, the next one that's coming up. This doesn't... So, the position that I'm placing this, number eight, is... It doesn't mean that this set is bad... It's just that there's sets that are better than it. So the next gear set, number eight, is going to be Worm. 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 There we go. Um, so this gear set is... It kind of went out of popularity from the Flames of, Ambi the Flames of Ambition patch. This was kind of not really needed anymore. And the reason why... Is because the new CP came into play and sustain was really easy. Now what's happened in the Blackwood patch is there was a bug with Minor Magic of Steel where it applied to more than one target and people getting like multiple procs of Minor Magic of Steel which really gave a, a big nerf to sustain. Now the best thing about Worm is if you're newer to tanking this is a fantastic set because for a tank... Having magic recovery is absolutely essential. It's something you need. It's something you want. It's something you've got to have because most of your skills cost magicka. So having magic recovery is fantastic. Now the two item bonus is obviously a bit of a waste. It's spell damage, but that's irrelevant because you've got the extra max magicka. You've got 129 magic recovery, and then for the five piece, it's a group buff and it buffs yourself. 145 magic recovery for yourself and your group members. So most groups nowadays have mostly magicka. As a main tank, this is a great set because if you're new to trials, let's say, or new to doing dungeons, you want good magic recovery, but also you want a buff set that's going to be easy to use that you don't have to worry about keep procking it. So, like, 
For example, if you're using a set like Elemental Catalyst, it's a very active set. You've got to be constantly casting skills, procking all of the different weaknesses. With this set, you don't do anything. You kind of stand there. You might partner it with something like Yornokrin, so you just taunt an enemy and you stand there and you play the mechanics. And that's providing two group buffs from two group sets without really doing anything. So it's a fantastic set. It's a good range set as well. So if you're really far away from your group in some kind of content, great set because this works from 28 meters away. So if you're doing a, a fight where you're at the back of a room, let's say the Locusties fight where you're range tanking it, you might want to use this because it's a good set to wear. You're nowhere near your group in that fight, but you are able to give them the buff because they're in 28 meter range of you. And so you give them that buff. It's nice and easy. Um, so this is a fantastic set, especially, if, like I say, for newer tanks. It's easy to farm. You can get it from a really, really easy non-DLC dungeon. Uh, the most difficult thing is getting the ice staff. That'll be the most tricky part. But you can use any staff. The ice staff is just the best. Um, in terms of the jewelry, the jewelry drops as name drops from bosses. So there's more chance to loot um, the jewelry because it's it's extra drops in, in a boss. It's like a boss name drop. You've also got the one-handed weapon is a boss name drop from the last boss. You've got the shield which drops in a quest. So the only problem you're going to have is trying to farm the staves. So it, it's an easy set to obtain. It's just the staves are really can be tricky to get. So this is my number eight. And like I say, it's it's increased in usefulness again. This is now a lot more useful than it was at the start of the Blackwood patch. So the start of the Blackwood patch, this wasn't as useful as it is right now. But right now it's become really useful again. There's a lot of really high tier groups that are using Worm for Rock Grove hard mode and as they're trying to push the triple achievement in there, they are using it as well. So yeah, it's definitely increased in usefulness um, as like very recently. The next gear set. It's tricky to kind of decide on this one. Um, I'm going to go for a set that I actually really, really like as my next one. And it's going to be Drake's Rush for number seven. Now, it's difficult for me to position this at number seven because I actually really like this set for four-man content, for dungeons, for arenas. Drake's Rush comes in at number seven. Um. Now, the reason why this set isn't as good as it would have been, when this was originally on the PTS, this was going to be a 12-person set. It was going to proc on you and your group, like your whole group. This was going to be a fantastic set. And what happened was some PvP guys got it nerfed because they were testing it. They were like, oh, we can run around in a big group, keep procking it, give everyone loads of ultimate, just run into keeps, drop all, everyone's dropping ults, left, right, and center. It got nerfed because of PvP. And I was really salty about it, really upset about it, because at the time, we only had one heavy armor set that was useful in Trials, and that was Yolnokrin. So Drake's Rush was going to be that heavy set, that really, really good set. And then they reduced it down to four people. You plus three others. It has got a 15-meter radius, so people need to be close by. This is one of my favorite sets for dungeon content. I know that like there's other sets that you could use that might be better in terms of the buff they give, but when you compare Yolnokrin, Drake's Rush, Powerful Assault, and Olorim, they're all providing a similar amount of DPS in a four-man group. When you look at it, they're very, there's very little between them, so it's hard to say that like Yolnokrin is not better than Drake's Rush in terms of the buff it gives. Um, not they're, they're around about the same. They're around about the same percentage of DPS, so. It's very comparable, and you can use one one or the other. It doesn't really matter. Like, you can use one or this or that. It doesn't make much difference. It's quite an easy set to proc as well. You can one bar it. You can back bar it because you just have to be on a bar, bash, and it provides the buff. So it's a nice set. The reason why it's so good for four-man content is because it ticks every 1.5 seconds, it's providing the major heroism buff. It's giving loads and loads of ultimate. And this is good for four-man content, but it's only good in an organized group. If you're not in an organized group, it's not actually that good because your group members need to be using their ultimate or this is not good. So people need to use their ult as soon as they've got it. If people don't use their ultimate straight away, this set loses its value rapidly because it's going to be ticking away, giving people that major heroism. And if they're not using their ultimate, they're just building it up and they're wasting ultimate gain. Now, if you're in an organized group, I've used it in organized groups in Black Rose Prison and it was absolutely fantastic. I would do a Warhorn for an ad pull. There'd be a, a like a Destro. Then the next set of ads would come in. There'd be a Destro. Then there'd be another Horn. And we'd just be rotating ults like every single pull because of this gear set. You take this away and we weren't able to do it. It was much, much slower in terms of the ultimate use. And it made a huge impact. 
So in those situations, it will make a difference. But you have to be in a group that's utilizing their ultimates and they're dropping them when they get them. They're using them and making sure that everybody doesn't have their ult at the same time. So people need to like start off by using ults and then trying to manage it so that you've got ults at different times to make use of not dropping them all in one go. Um, but yeah, this, this is a, a fantastic set. I love this set. I love the max stamina that you get from it as well. So the max stamina is the reason why in my dungeon setup, I've got 35k max stamina on my build. I use Yolnakrin and I use Drake's Rush. And with this set, I have 35k max stamina. That is more than a stamina damage dealer. And then that is on a tank. That is on a, a built tank that has 45k health. And it has 23, 24k max magic as well. It's absolutely insane. So, very good set. It's an easy set to farm as well. So, if you want to farm an easy set, you might not be able to get Powerful Assault. Because Powerful Assault is a set that costs a lot of money. The staves are a million plus gold. Um, if you don't use the staves, it's still pretty pricey. You need to go into Imperial City. You need to get Telvar to buy it, or you need to buy it from a merchant. It can be quite expensive. Um, this gear set, you just farm it from Black Drake Villa. So obviously you'll need ESO Plus or the DLC, but it's easier to farm, and it's easier to farm than Olorim, because to get Olorim, you need to go and do a trial. So this is an easier set. You might consider it to, because uh, it, and it is a great set in that environment. So there we go. Drake's Rush is my number seven. I do love a bit of Drake's. The next set is going to be Olorim. The next gear set is Olorim. Now, Olorim is a situational tank set. Usually, a healer will be will pro will provide major courage. So, major courage is a big buff. It's like a five six percent DPS increase. So, it's a huge buff. The only times it's worth using uh, this particular gear set is when um, in, in dungeon content. So let's say you're doing a dungeon and you have no healer. You can use Olorim and you still get the buff. You don't want to lose Major Courage. It's a huge, huge buff. And the way you proc this is obviously you have to either put down your blockade or you have to have something that you can throw into your group. So let's say you're a Templar tank. You would throw a shard on top of your group. If you're on a Dragon Knight tank, you could throw Caltrops, you could throw Endless Hail, you could throw um, Cinderstorm, something like that. So you kind of throw it and you put it on top of your group, you give them the major courage. Other places where this is really good are off-tank situations. And the reason why you do that is when the off-tank has to play really far away from the group and you're in like a more higher tier group. So let's say you're going for God Slayer. There's no point in putting the off tank in Powerful Assault for the Yolnacrim fight because they have to hold an add away from group. So potentially, for example, you'd have the off tank wear Olorim, you'd have the group healer use PA, and that way, somebody is in the group 100% of the fight providing PA. The off tank can stand out of group with the add, keep it safely not facing the group so it doesn't kill your group, and they just throw something on top of the group. They throw a Caltrops on top of the group. They provide that buff to the group very, very easily just by throwing a skill next to the group. So if you're like more of an experienced tank, this is a good way of doing certain trials. In VHOF on the first boss, again, another fight where the off tank would use it because the off tank's out of group. If you still want the off tank to be using useful gear sends, you might have the off tank use Sax Champion with Olorim and they stand in the middle of the room with the other boss and they just throw it on top of the group and they can reach from there and it's definitely a good strategy. So. This is a good set for off tanks in very specific trial situations. And it's a very, very good set for four man content. As outside of that, it's mostly going to be a healer set. So healers run Olorim and, and Spell Power Cure, which both provide uh, major courage. They prov That's mostly a healer job. Usually they will do that because these are light armor sets. So usually that job will fall to the healer. But in situations where you don't have an off tank in group, the healer will use PA. The off tank might use Olorim. And again, four-man content. Really, really good, especially if you don't have a healer in four-man content. So that is Olorim. And this set is not too difficult to grab hold of either. You get it from Cloudrest. It's quite easy to set up like a normal Cloudrest run. It's a very easy trial to do on normal. Even with random groups from Craglorn, they can run in here and do this trial quite simple. So it's not too difficult. Okay, next on the list... is a new gear set that's coming next patch. So 
We've got a new set coming. And this is going to arrive with the Waking Flame DLC. And this set is not going to be something that you're going to need for everything. This, again, is going to be an ad pull set. It's also going to be a set that you use if you've got stamina damage dealers in your group. It's going to be a set that you use in situations where there's a lot of enemies and there's no crusher enchant. Um, so, like, for example, if you're doing cloud rest, there might not be a crusher enchant on all the enemies. If people are using double frost staff setups, there might not be any minor breach. There might not be this or that. So, Crimson Oath is my number five. And this is not even in the game yet. It's on the PTS and it's looking to be a very good set. So it's a basic replacement for Alkosh. And I've done a video review of this set on YouTube already. It is a fantastic set because it's so easy to proc. And like Alkosh, if you think back to how Alkosh functions, that is a much more difficult set to use because Alkosh is like a conal AoE in front of your character. This is a set that you get from a dungeon. You don't have to farm it from a trial. More of Law Cash, trying to do more of Law Cash to get Alkosh has been known to be quite a problematic situation. With this gear set, you're going to need to do something extremely simple. You're going to need to do a new dungeon and you're going to grab it. It's, it's easy. So it's much easier to obtain. To prop this set, it's got a 12 meter radius, 360 degrees around your character. So it's much more efficient than Alkosh because it will proc all the way around your character. It's not just a cone in front of you, a 12 meter cone in front of you. It is 12 meters around your whole character. And it will only proc from a major buff when you are within 12 meters of an enemy. So you can still pre-buff and you can walk into an ad pull. And when you get into the middle of an ad pull, you use some kind of skill that has a major buff. And there are so many skills that can proc this. So things, even simple things like Igneous Shield will proc this. Um, using balance will you proc it using hardened armor anything that says a major and it's a buff not a debuff debuffs won't proc it so like if you go and use taunt that provides major breach that's not going to proc it that's a debuff so any major buff will proc it major or minor buff in fact um, you just walk in you press a skill with a major or minor buff and it's boom it procs it um, and the reason why this is good is it's providing 3,541 armor shred so this is reducing armor by that value now the reason why this is good for ad pulls is in an ad pull you cannot provide crusher on more than one enemy so when you put down blockade you can't you can't crush a more than one enemy this is why crimson earth is going to be good so in an ad pull you can only crush a one enemy your crusher enchant will only apply to one enemy if you're combining this with defile dragon that's going to provide minor breach if you then also put down Caltrops, that's major breach. If you then proc Crimson Oath, that is essentially... You can basically use Crimson Oath instead of a Crusher Enchant. That is essentially what you're doing. You're replacing a Crusher Enchant for Crimson. So in area of effect situations, in a situation where you've got a lot of enemies, you're going to use Crimson Oath because it's the same as having like a Crusher Enchant as AoE. That is basically the function of this set. Now, the reason why this is number five and not lower down is because like Dragon's Defilement, for example, is an ad pull setup. This is an ad pull setup, but this is also a great setup for um, stamina trials. If you've got stamina damage dealers in a trial, they are going to be way under the pen cap. You are going to need to use this in a stamina based trial. So this is why this is higher up the tier list than Dragon's Defilement, because you need it. And yeah, if, if you're missing Minor Breach, use this gear set. If you're missing um, Crusher, use this gear set so this gear set has got a number of functions i would use this set on something like the navintas fight if i was doing uh sunspire because the ad phase of that fight is the worst part this is going to be a great way to debuff all the enemies so the ad phases on sunspire are worse than the actual boss fights the boss fights are pretty calm once you get to the ad phase and you've got like six ads that's when stuff gets a bit crazy that's when you need to be able to debuff things really quickly really efficiently boom um, you want to be using a gear set like this to debuff everything. And like I say, stamina groups, ad pulls. This is an absolutely essential set for magicka groups for ad pulls and uh, stamina groups for boss fights. If you're in a magicka group and it's a boss fight, you won't need it. This is not that like useful for uh, magicka groups on boss fights. But if it's a stamina group or an ad pull, you're going to need to use this gear set. So there we go. That's Crimson Oath. And this is going to be available with the Waking Flame patch that's coming out. Number five... 
Okay, now we're getting to the top four gear sets, guys. Top four coming up. Um, what are we going to go with? Okay, so this next gear set, it's difficult. So my next gear set is something that's gained more popularity recently. And the reason why is because when Worm Cult became less useful at the start of Blackwood, this gear set became much more useful because tanks had no gear sets to wear and nothing to do. So we're bringing in Elemental Catalyst. Now, I would have rated this higher than, than the top four, but this isn't a gear set that's gonna be good for everybody because it requires a lot of micro management. You have to be using a lot of cast of skill. You have to cast a lot of skills. So you have to be casting skills regularly. You can't just sit there and it's not just gonna work by itself. So you are gonna to need to be active with this skill. You're gonna need to use it in engulfing flames. You're gonna need to be using blockade. You're gonna need to have a shot glyph. It, you do have to sacrifice certain things to use this and you do have to be active. So, like it's a very, very good set and it's a very good tank set. And the reason why it's a good tank set is because it's, it's, it's not super difficult to use it. Like if you're a Dragonite tank, you just use engulfing flames and you just use blockade with a shot glyph and that's going to provide basically 100% elemental catalyst as long as you keep those skills active you pop them down and there you go job done it's not that difficult but for newer players it's not going to be something that's easy to use and also a lot of groups already have somebody using elemental catalyst if you've got somebody already using it it's not a good set now elemental catalyst is also a gear set that necros have typically used up to now and the problem is is that like this could be this is a good tank set but it's also not a big dps loss for a damage dealer to use it it's basically no it's basically no dps loss you don't lose any damage really on a damage dealer by using this gear set it's a very small amount that you might lose so you're not really sacrificing anything as a damage dealer to use this gear set so for that reason it's not always a most optimal tank set like if you're newer to tanking you're definitely not going to use it you're going to use something like worm that's simple to use you don't really have to worry too much it's just going to be activated and it's and it's there with elemental catalyst it's not super difficult but you do have to keep on top of it because it's such a huge buff to your group so for each weakness that you provide so you need to do flame damage you need to do frost damage you need to do shock damage each one of those um, provides an extra 5% crit damage. And that's all crit damage. That's not just fire crit damage. That is total crit damage. So 15% more crit damage to the enemy that you have this activated on. So it's absolutely essential. It's essential because 15% more crit damage is a huge amount of damage that your group's going to be doing. So you don't want to be losing this. If you keep a really bad uptime of this, make a DD use it instead. There's no point in letting the tank use it if you're not able to keep 100%, if you're not keeping 100% uptime, then don't use it. Definitely practice to get better at using it. But if you're in like a, a really high level core team, of like a main team of a team and you're the main tank and you've got really, really poor uptimes of this, then do not use it because you'd just be much better off having a damage dealer, keep on top of it and maintain it 100%. Um, so yeah, great tank set. It gives tanks something to do. However... You do need to be careful. You do need to be good with using it. And it's not good if you're not very... If you're not good at keeping the uptime, absolutely don't use it. Let the damage dealers run it. Run something else. Run something that's a bit easier to manage. Um, but yeah, fantastic set. And that is my number four. So EC is our number four. And now we're into the top three tank sets. Okay. Now... It's... um. It's difficult for me to talk about this next gear set because some people are probably not going to agree with this because, well, this, this next gear set is pretty much essential for trials. It's not good for anything else. That is literally the only time you're going to use it. It's mostly used on a Necro. It's the Sax Champion set. Now, hear me out. The reason why this is in my top three there are no other gear sets that are good for off tanks for trials. Um, if you're new to tanking, right? Or even if, no, not even if you're not new to tanking. 
This gear set is really, really important because it's heavy armor and it has some kind of use. There are no other heavy armor sets out there that an off tank can wear that are good. So Gallonway, for example, you can't use Gallonway on an off tank because you won't ever proc it. You can't use Yolnokrin on an off tank because you don't always taunt enemies. That's the only other, and, and Dragon's Defilement, the only other heavy set in the, in the list there, not much use. Drake's Rush, not that useful for trials. This is the only 12 person set that is good for trials that's providing a benefit. Now, this isn't limited to just the Necro. So the Necro is absolutely the best with this gear set. If, one, of the, one of the big benefits is, if you're on a Necro, this is when it's performing at its absolute pinnacle best, like the best you can get. So you wedge it in between two Warhorns. You've got a tank or a healer who uses a Warhorn. You've got a Necro who uses a Colossus and they also get major force. Now you don't want to lose the, the stats. You don't want to lose the 10% Magicka and Stamina. If you lose 10% Magicka and Stamina by not using a Warhorn, you're losing a few K DPS. You don't want to do that. So you want to wedge this in between two people. Uh, so, excuse me. Two people using a Horn. Now on a Necro, the reason why this is useful is because it's it's giving that two for one benefit. It means that a damage dealer in your group can run an extra Destro. If you've got like three Necros damage dealers, one of them can run a Destro and then you've got the tank who runs the extra Colossus. And it just works really, really well. It's a way to increase DPS. It does improve DPS. Um, but it's not good for like dungeon content. It's not that great for dungeon content. I've tried it out. It didn't really appeal to me that much. It wasn't as good as using one of the other four sets that we usually use. Yolnokrin, Olorim, PA and uh, Drakes. Like those four sets perform way better than this in four-man content. Now, another thing to consider is for any group that is trying to play a trial in a safe manner, if you're in a beginner group, an intro training group, if you're trying to get your first ever clear of a trial, if you're trying to get your very first ever triple achievement, your first ever TikTok tournament, your first ever God Slayer, I don't know, right? This set gives you the option of using a f***ing barrier, okay? You can play it extra safe. I don't see enough people using this gear set down the safe route. There has never been a time ever in recent memory where it was acceptable in a group to use a safety ultimate. Everyone is always talking about bat like uh, Warhorn damage is the priority and it always, is, it always has been. The faster you clear a fight, the better. And there's never been a chance to use a selfish gear set in a group, in a trial, or anything like that. No one wants to see it. People don't want it. Raid leaders don't want you to be wearing selfish sets. Raid leaders don't want you to be doing this. This is the first time ever a selfish gear set has a value in a group. You can use a barrier and still get major force. So you get major force, which is the same as a horn, as a warhorn, and you also get a, a 35k damage shield. How is that not fantastic? If you are a brand new tank, going into a trial. Make sure you've got this. You need to get this. Um, it just gives you that ability to provide safety and damage combined. But you've got to make sure that you're wedging it between two Warhorns. If you don't have somebody use a Warhorn first and you just use this gear set, you're missing a couple of a couple of K damage. I think it works out. Is it 3K damage? It depends. But like, you don't want to lose the 10% Max Magicka. So when you use a Warhorn, you get 10% Max Magicka and Max Stamina. You don't want to lose that. You've got to still have that. But that lasts for 30 seconds. So if you get somebody using a Warhorn, then you get somebody using their Colossus with Sax Champion, and then you get the next person using a Horn, those stats are not going to go away. They're going to still be there. You've got enough time to have the stats on either side of that person proccing the Sax Champion set. So you don't lose any damage there. You just gain more damage because you've, you've basically combined two ultimates into one and you've got all the same benefits you would have had before, but with an extra ultimate. You've got one person less using a Colossus and you've got an extra damage ult combined in there. So it's providing a good group buff. This is only useful for trials. It's mostly an off tank set. It's a heavy armor set. There's nothing really bad about it in that sort of way. So for trials, if you're going into trials, definitely get this. If you're a Necro, it's fantastic. If you're not a Necro, it's still useful. It means that you're going to add an absolute truckload of safety to your group. You're going to make your group extra tanky, extra safe. You're going to be able to get through it. In those moments where you're in an execute phase in your first triple, you might be in your first God Slayer, you're absolutely bricking it. You're absolutely in your pants because you don't, want to, you don't want people to throw it. 
You've got Sax Champion on. You cast the barrier. It's all good. You're still giving them the damage, but you're not going to have people dying to something really, um, really silly at the end. Do you know what I mean? So there you go. Sax Champion's number three. And as I say, it's it's not my absolute favourite set. But I do I can appreciate that it's very, very useful in all types of groups. So there we go. Number three. Number two. Now, this gear set would never have been number two before now. So as we go into next patch, the Waking Flame patch, this next gear set is now my number two. It wasn't. It definitely wasn't before. It is now because it's actually getting fixed. So our number two set, Powerful Assault. Great set. Great buff. Um, 307 weapon and spell damage. Now, this was nowhere near going to be a number two set before now. The only reason it's here in number two is because next patch, the Waking Flame patch, this has been fixed. This will now activate on people without a problem. Currently on the live server, um, if you're not a Necro or a Warden, good luck getting the buff. It just doesn't proc on your inner stack. Next patch... It's going to have a smart targeting system where it will only it will prioritize activating on people who don't have the buff. As soon as that becomes a thing, this gear set is absolutely fantastic. Now, this is also a very good four-man content set. You can use this on the body instead of Yolnacrin because this is a bigger buff than Yolnacrin. But obviously, that requires some micromanagement. You can pair it with Yolnacrin as well. So you can use it in place of Yolnacrin on the body or you can use it on your second set, the weapons and jewelry. So it's a bit, it's quite versatile. It's a versatile set that you can use in multiple situations. In terms of trials, <clears throat> um, it's going to be a, a, it's a good set for off tanks. You'll pair it with your Sax Champion and things like that. Sometimes the main tank will use it. So in certain fights in VHOF, it's good where you split up. On VMOL, where you split up, it's kind of good. Um, it's very good uh, on the main tank in Cloud Rest. It's great on off tanks in pretty much all content. Next patch, you're going to be able to stack up in one stack. Off tank runs in, you cast. An assault ability twice and it's going to proc on everyone. So this is a fantastic gear set. The biggest problem with this set is the fact that the ice staff is millions of gold. I can understand people's frustration with this set because of that reason. Now, people need to understand there is ways and means around this. You don't have to use the frost staff. Even if you're looking on the tank club website and you're looking at a build and it shows a frost staff on the back bar, that is just like the absolute best situation that it might be used in. However, the problem with only using Powerful Assault on the back bar is your uptime is likely to not be very good. Now, the problem that people have is when they throw a gear set on that's only active on the back bar is they forget to proc it. So if you put Powerful Assault only on your back bar and then you forget to use it, what was the point in doing it? What was the point in spending 3 million gold on an ice staff for you to forget to use it? Because you keep forgetting to proc it. You want to be using it every 10 seconds. You need to proc this every 10 seconds. And if you're not doing that, then you need to front bar the set anyway. You shouldn't be throwing it on the back bar. So the best ways of running this can be actually to front bar the gear set. And the way of doing that is using the jewelry, the neck, the rings, combining it with two pieces of medium on the hands and the waist. There is nothing wrong with putting it on the hands and the waist. Nothing wrong with that at all. There's also nothing wrong with using it on the shield and the one-handed weapon. If you want to front bar it, you can do that. And then you can back bar a different weapon or something else. It doesn't really matter. You don't have to use the ice staff. That is just sometimes the best way to do it if you're good at maintaining it. If you're bad at maintaining it, front bar it. If you're not very good at maintaining if you haven't got enough gold, front bar it. Put it on a two body pieces. It doesn't matter if you have to run five heavy and two medium. It's not going to be the end of the world. You're not going to be really, really bad at the game all of a sudden. You're not going to be really bad at tanking. You're not going to be taking loads of damage. It's not going to make that much difference. Using two medium actually has some minor benefits. It will increase, uh, it will reduce the cost of your stamina abilities. So your taunt, your, your heroic slash, things like that. You also get cheaper dodge roll. You get increased sprint speed. So there are some perks to having the two medium pieces. There's nothing wrong with going two medium. But you would have to make sure that you use a monster set that's heavy. Because you wouldn't really want to dip lower than five heavy for, for a lot of content. So, yeah, you just really need to look at it and decide how you're going to run it. You can use this. On the body, five medium body pieces. There's nothing wrong with that. You can off tank a lot of trials by using powerful assault body. Like when you look at Kraglon trials, when you look at um, Vmol, when you look at 
hulls of fabrications. When you look at dungeons, a lot of those situations, you can just use it on the body because the damage is so low. Using five pieces of medium with two heavy, now on the current CP system, is the same as running five heavy in the old CP system. So when we compared the damage a couple of patches ago, when the new CP system was coming into place, wearing five medium now with two heavy is the same as running five one one on the old CP system, on CP1, the old CP system, at 810 CP on the old CP system. So you're not going to take loads more damage than you would have done then. It's going to be a comparable level of damage. So if you want to, and you're in a situation where the damage isn't super high, then you can run this on the body. If you also combine the fact that there's a CP tree coming out next patch that's really OP, possibly even to the point where it's broken, um, you're not going to be taking that much damage at all. So as an off-tank, wearing this on the body is very, very rarely going to be an issue. If you also want to incorporate some damage into your build as an off-tank, then this is a great way to do that, because it's a medium set. You can provide some DPS. So it's it's an option. If you're the off-tank in more of Lorcage, boss one, you don't really need to taunt anything. You might have to take the main boss for a few seconds. So you can run this on the first boss. On the twins, they don't really do any damage. It's only when um, you're inside the AoEs and stuff that it's a problem. Like, there's not a lot of damage on the twins. You can tank that in medium armor really, really easily. The last boss, when you take the hulks, you don't even need to block them. You only need to block the overhead swing. And the only reason you die as the off-tank on VMO last boss is because of the, the hulk enraging. So you could just DPS kind of in powerful assault body pieces for that sort of content. So it really depends from player to player. It's going to vary how you run this set, but it's going to be extremely good. Next patch, Waking Flame patch. When this gets fixed, this is being fixed and it's going to be fantastic. So... Powerful Assault is our number two gear set. So number one. I don't think it's really going to come as any surprise to anybody. No one's going to be surprised by this because I absolutely love this gear set. It's my favorite gear set in the game and it has been for a long time. And the reason why is because it's just so good. So number one is obviously going to be Leeching. So Leeching Plate is just the absolute best gear set in the game um, it provides you with more healing than you could ever need it provides you with loads of sustain if you're on a dragon knight it's just an unbelievable set what can I say so here it is guys here's the leeching set oh Yolnacrin um <laughs> uh, no so yeah, leeching isn't doesn't appear on the list, I'm afraid. So number one, uh, my, my most favourite gear set in the game, the Claw of Yolnacrin. Now, the only thing, like there's nothing to dislike about this gear set. Yolnacrin is unbelievable. The forums are going to be furious. <laughs> Oh my god, there's going to be people protesting with signs and torches. TC Lee. No more TC Lee. Ban him from Twitch. Twitch partner, don't give it him. Get rid. Riots. There's going to be riots all over the world. Well, my, the biggest following I've got is in the USA, the UK and Germany. So if there's riots in those countries today or tomorrow or whatever, there's going to be protests. I, I'm sorry. Okay, right. In, in all seriousness, um, the Claw of Yolnacrin set is the absolute number one tank set in the game. And you can argue this with me if you want. That's fine. This set is just so good because it is designed for tanks. Max health, max health, max stamina, minor Aegis. It's got the stats. It's got the things that you need. It provides a group buff, Minor Courage. It's one of the... There's very few ways to get Minor Courage. And as a tank, it is extremely easy to proc this set. So the reason why it's like right at the top there is because of the ease of use. Every single tank in the game can use this gear set. It doesn't matter if you're the best tank in the game or the absolute worst tank in the game. You're still going to be able to make use of this set and it's going to perform well. Because all you need to do is taunt. You, all you need to do is the absolute basic tank job of pressing taunt and taunting an enemy. You do that, it procs this gear set, and there you go. You've got a fantastic group buff. Minor Courage adds about 3% DPS to all your damage dealers. 
3% DPS is nothing to, to like shy away from. Uh, sets like Olorim is about 5%, 6%. This set is just too good. Um, and, and like I say, the, the, the main reason is because anybody can use it. You just It's very simple to activate. There's gear sets like Elemental Catalyst. It's very difficult to use because if you're newer to the game, you might not be able to maintain everything really, really high. Um, things like PA. You have to be constantly, every 10 seconds, you're going to need to double cast a skill to get PA. So some people aren't able to do that. With Yolnukrin, you press Taunt, everyone's got it. In a dungeon build, you press Taunt, everyone's got it. Do you know what I mean? So, the number one set, my absolute favourite gear set, the Claw of Yolnukrin. If you're gonna, if if you could only get one tank set, this would be it. If you got, if you're gonna, it doesn't matter how good you are as a tank. You want to have Yolnukrin with something else. So even if you need a selfish gear set, you would use. Yolnukrin with a selfish gear set. So if you're somebody who wants to use Leechin, use it with Yolnukrin. So you've at least got one group buff set, one selfish set. If you're trying to optimize a trial, you're always going to use Yolnukrin. It's a heavy armor set. It's one of the few heavy armor sets that's even worth using. So there you go. Yolnukrin is my number one set, guys. There is no, no conversation really to be had. It is just absolutely fantastic. And there we go. So guys, that is my top 10 tank sets and this is including next patch like i say we've got crimson oath in there that's for next patch if you um if you if you're going to be farming gear use this list to decide what sets are going to be valuable use this uh video i guess to to decide what you think if it's worth it or not for you to get a certain set um and yeah 